back to Unapologetically Woman. We're celebrating phenomenal women all across Kentucky who make no apologies for their perspectives or the impacts that they're making in the community. Today we're celebrating Monica Kajiha. Monica is a wife, a mom, an entrepreneur, a leader in the community. Unapologetically woman, Monica Kajiha, that's you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I honored to be here. You have an amazing story that starts in Mexico. That's Tell right. us about that. Well, I was born in a little place called Xochimilco. It's a very touristic place. Um, it's uh, full of traditions and culture, very pre-Hispanic aspects and new aspects. So since very young, I was able to be submerged in, uh, in a beautiful traditions. And that was always been part of me. And I always been very active person and um, since I was a year, eight years old I created my first Mother's Day festival. You've always been a leader even at eight. <laughs> yes. Um, well now they call a leader my mom call me other <laughs> thing proper <laughs> woman but um, yes um, I always been very active and try to do different things. Um, um, I love the study, I love the school, um, went to the uh, Instituto Politecnico Nacional in Mexico, which studies uh, biology science, and um, yeah, well, everything started in Mexico. So everything started in Mexico, but you weren't able to finish your degree there. Yes. Because you decided that you wanted to uh, be the most important thing, Yes, exactly, and it is a very important part of my life because it was a hard decision to make. And I know sometimes we see success in different ways. We see success at the way academic success. But sometimes the things that you sacrifice give you more satisfaction than what, what you can achieve Stay in a school. And seeing my daughter grow every time I come back from school because it was like eight hours being away from her every day, it was heartbreaking to see her missing those parts, those special moments from her. So I took the decision to stop my career there and be a full-time mom. And it's, it's, it was hard, but I have never rejected. And well, you have three children, right? I got three. Tell us about them, because they're doing some great things. Yeah, well, um, my daughter is a lawyer. She's a prosecutor in the uh, juvenile court. My son, my middle son is a manager and the young girls just starting with his jockey career. How proud is your husband of that? It is over the moon, he loves them. It's a very good dad and we love them the way they are. <laughs> well, and that's all because you made the difficult decision that you were going to, to be at home and be a stay at home mom. I think it made the difference, however, um, having the opportunity to be there with them growing all the time, it was, I think, an important part for them to trust me and communicate with me and I'm being able to be part of their lives in a more deep part that um, if I have left them with my family. And so you were in Mexico and then you get an opportunity to come to the United States. Yeah, my husband has always worked with the horses. He has been with the horses industry forever since I know him. And uh, he was invited to start working in the horse sales in California. And then an invitation comes to come to Kentucky. We had to look in the map where Kentucky was. You had to find it first. <laughs> where are we going? First. Exactly. Where is this Kentucky thing? And uh, fortunately, we have a family that could help us to start our life here in Kentucky, but Georgia. So my husband came first, and then we uh, run out him. We're not, we not we joined him here in California, and eventually we moved to here to Lexington. How long have you guys been in the states? Twenty two years. Twenty two years. What's been your favorite part about being in the U.S.? Oh, the multicultural opportunities you have. It's amazing to be neighbor with somebody from Panama and somebody from China, and I'm I'm, I'm in over the moon about that. I think it's is we are so similar in many things, and always you can learn something different from somebody else, especially if you across the world uh, for difference. You know. Well, when you see all of the variety with, you know, all of the different cultures and different people, you know, that makes it exciting for me. It is, exactly. And that's the thing I love more, uh, be able to be 
uh, friends with people that I have never visited their, co their countries, but I can experience through them their culture. And they enrich you. They make you think life different because mm -hmm. not everything is like a you think it is. People think different. Oh, absolutely, right. absolutely. So you guys come to the U.S. Yes. And it's a little bit of a transition for you guys. A big tr transition. Um, when, for, when we first come here to Lexington, we had just three luggage and three kids. No, um, no, um, really money on in the packets. Um, no, it's not English. We didn't speak any English. I didn't speak any English at all. But um, it's, it has been a every time challenge yourself to improve one word at a time. Like I used to tell myself, don't don't get ex um, too frustrated, not understanding or trying to communicate it was the hardest part. Try to make people understand what you're trying to say. Right. And so learning one word at the day it was my challenge and I remember making the homework with my kids with my dictionary key and the homework key and I did the <laughs> homework first to try to explain to my kids mm -hmm. and it, it was a, a growing experience and the other growing experience is living without your family because you always have your family like a cushion on there in case you need a babysitter or you need extra cash or you need or some support or some support exactly so you are here alone and the only people you have is your husband and then your kids and you had to grow you had to learn to do things different and, um, and create this partnership with your husband that it was different in your country because the, the roles changed probably mm -hmm. right so um, it's a whole changes and it's a, a, a growing as a person as an individual and so you you said in one, one of the things that I read about you is you started off being a housekeeper here at a hotel. That's correct. That's correct. So the first thing I got into a uh, desk and I was, please, I'm looking for a job with my dictionary. I have to write everything <laughs> first and I'm trying to pronounce it correctly. Mm -hmm. And I got the first job as a housekeeping and from that I start uh, trying different places. I had the opportunity to go back to school here. I went back to do my GED here. So even though I had uh, a university uh, studies in Mexico, I started with a GED here. Then I went to the BCTC and I was able to go back to, to school and take again. Well, and that's where you met Erin Howard. I met Erin Howard, and she's a great, great woman. It was a great support for me, and I think uh, it wasn't for her. Uh, people that really are interested on you, you growing, uh, have been able to do it because it's a, a scary way back to school, especially in a place that you don't understand how things work, right? So she helps me a lot, and I went to back to school. I studied there. I got my degree, my social degree in arts, and I met also Jim Fenton is a ESL teacher and he has been a wonderful wonderful person and he, I he, I always make him translate uh, help me with my writing Would you make just, sure I'm make saying the correct thing that's right <laughs> because as we talked about off the air some words are different than what you think exactly. they are exactly even you thinking is different I mean you are thinking something that you think is gonna say the same in, in English but it's not it's you not. have to start thinking in English and then write in English so. so you didn't just go into the housekeeping business. You started a housekeeping business. Yes, I started a housekeeping business. I have wonderful clients. I'm very happy with what I do. That's my that's what put food on the table. But Honestly, I see that as an opportunity for me to make something else because uh, because I am my own boss. I can put my own hours. So I love I have, the way you said it. I am my own boss. I got my yes. own yes. boss. Yes. I can I'm do whatever I boss. want. Yes. Uh, my clients love me, thank God, because <laughs> <laughs> that's another thing I love about my job. Uh, they see me as a family member, not just a worker. Uh, so I have the opportunity to do other things. They are my passion that give me more satisfaction. So then, to get more satisfaction, you teamed up with your husband and started some some businesses around equine. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, he started buying horses, which was very difficult. 
uh, because it's a very expensive business, it is expensive. and it's, uh, you have to be lucky sometimes. Um, but he's a person with a fantastic experience. We are breeders and uh, bro bro uh, boarding and trainers for horses, for quarter horse, for uh, thoroughbred horses. I think it's incredible that you guys came here with literally pennies in your pocket. Yes. And you have been able to not just have one business, but to have two of them. Yes, um, I think so, yes. I see it as um, keep your goals up, not always thinking, okay, I made it, that's it, that I'm fine. No, we have to look for the next step. So what's gonna be next? What What's gonna be, we, we get here, okay, but that's another going up. And we've been up and down, but it's part of life, and we learn a lot about the, the bad times, you know, because... Well, you've had some bad times, and I think people go through struggles, because <coughs> you even talked about being evicted at some point. Yes, and it's a very... <laughs> It's a very important part of my life, and I know it's a very touchy experience. But when we were in Georgia, one night we get in an argument with the person where we were living with, and they evict us in the middle of the night with my three kids. My younger she was two years old. My my daughter was uh, ten years old. So I was in the streets with no money, no place to go, nobody to than you know. How and scary was that for you? <laughs> it was really scary. <clears throat> uh, my husband was with us at that time and we only have $100 left. And so I call a friend of mine and I ask her, listen, can you take us to a motel because we cannot stay here. And it, it was the middle of the winter. Uh, it was November, I'm, I'm sorry, it was December 14 when this happened. And she took us to a hotel and um, well, it was a night I couldn't sleep because you can do nothing. Even if you call your family in Mexico and ask them, can you send us my money? There will be no money and time to pay for another night for a hotel. So right. what are you gonna do? You're gonna be in the street with your kids and no money and you don't know anybody. So um, <clears throat> my friend, uh, I, um, that night made me doubt everything. Made me doubt myself, made me doubt God. Let me doubt everything, and I tell the story that I was watching for the first time in my life. My 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 husband cry in the Niger's mirror with him. I never seen cry, and then I saw a squirrels up and down. I say, how is possible that the squirrels have a place to live and food to eat, and we don't? So yeah. Um, but you didn't stay in that place. You no. You you got through it. I did. I my friend came back again, and I asked her. Listen, we had like another fifty dollars in the in the pockets. Let's see, somebody can take us to Kentucky because we were in Georgia. Take us to Kentucky because my husband has a promise for working in the horse sales again, and maybe we can get the money to get back to Mexico. And uh, he had some friends that he had making in, in, in Lexington. So my friend took me some of the grocery store around the town, and we visit, e we visit everywhere. And keep in mind, it was a four hours driving for anybody who wants to give us a ride. Four hours driving back and forth makes eight. For, five, for $50, nobody's gonna wanna do it. So. Right. We ended up in a grocery store, which is, uh, was also a bakery, and the woman in there uh, told us, uh, well, why you don't call the radio station? So maybe you can make a call to the whole community in the, ra the Spanish radio station. So you can make the call to everybody, and maybe they can give you the, the help that you need. So she called the radio station, she put me with the host, and I don't remember what I told him. I honestly don't, but I, I first say, well, happy, uh, Merry Christmas to everybody, and I'm gonna start talking and told them my problem. And I was really, really in a bad place right there. I was like, that's it, this is the, the lowest I can go, and I bring in all my family with me. So um, but the host told me, well, listen, uh, don't go anywhere, stay in the line, we're gonna make some calls and see if somebody wants to give you the right to Kentucky. <clears throat> so. 
I wait there, uh, the, whole, the, the owner of the store bring me a coffee and say, okay, you're gonna be fine. Then I was like, no, this is never gonna get better. My friend was with me, I was crying my eyes out. And then you I almost lost hope. I totally was like, I know, this is it, I, I lost hope. Um, and look at the, at the wall that was next to me and there was a Jesus poster it's, that says, lean on me. I was like, okay, I'm gonna lean on you. Let me see. Um, were you doubtful then, even when you said, I'm going to lean on you? Or were you, con were you I convicted? I was so yeah. tired. And like, uh, I was in my last straw. So there was nothing else to do but lean on him. You know? I mean, this is, uh, this is it. This is what I can do. So I'm going to lean on him. Just after that, people start getting in the store. And they were asking, who's the woman who needs a ride to Lexington? Oh, that's her. And, so, and the people said, you know, I cannot give you the ride, but here, there's $10. And then people keep coming keep and coming. coming and coming and coming. And they start giving me money and money. I wanted my, my hands to start getting bigger and bigger with coins. And, and there was these kids with piggy bags on, on money, like a crush, like they took it from the piggy bag and they bring me the piggy bag there and the, and the coins and everything. But beyond that, it was like, a, God bless you. Don't lose faith. You, you did lean on him and, 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 he, and he, responded. Blessed you. he responded. He yes. responded through the people, through the, the, the people. And, and they were telling me, God bless you. Don't lose hope. Here's some money. Stay okay. Stay fine. Um, the host told me, "Listen, um, don't go because there's people that can go out of their houses. So one of the volunteers are gonna go around the town to collecting the money for people who has no cars to collect." I said, "What? You had that? That's I, I don't know what to say. I, I never asked for money. I just asked for a ride to to Kentucky." Um, stay there, don't go anywhere. So I remember the people from the bakery, get, they were working in the back, the, the cookers, they brought me this bread. I said, we bought this for you, fake turkey with you. So I was like uh, overwhelmed, but also full of hope and faith, not only in me, in the humanity. I mean, we are right. together, we are a fantastic, community that even with all our f bad uh, propaganda, we are always together. So uh, my, my friend, I told my friend, well, listen, we got money to buy our tickets to go to Lexington. So go back to get my family from the motel and let's go meet here. When my husband come and he saw me with all this with money. With the money, yeah. <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I didn't do anything. I, it was all God and the community that gave us all this a new, that stood new, up for new you. hope, new chance to begin in. And so, and you have now turned that into giving other people hope through all of your artistic abilities. Yeah. Um, and dance. Talk about that. Okay, well, yeah, mm. we, like I say, the opportunity to work in the cleaning houses give me, the, give me the chance to take some of my time to work in what is my passion with Casa de la Cultura. In 2013, right after I got my degree for BCTC, I was in the middle of my studies to get my master's degree for social work. And many of the classes that I took for social work opened my eyes to see the gap that exists between the generations generations of parents, uh, kids that were born here, they're, they're trying to be accepted in the society and therefore they don't speak English, or they don't speak Spanish, or they don't want to do what their parents do because they want to be accepted by their peers. So they you create... You think they're trying to assimilate. Exactly. They want to be accepted on this. But the truth is they're always gonna be Latino heritage. They're always gonna have that brown skin. They're always gonna be asked, where are you from? Mm -hmm. How do you, how a kid that was born here answered to that question, right? So if 
It, that's a very important part of anybody's identity. Your culture is a very important part of who you are as a whole. It was very important for me to give them a space where parents can share with their kids their tradition, their culture, and mm -hmm. keep enriching all this. So uh, Harry Howard and Jim Fentel, we were sitting talking about that, talking about going back to um, uh, starting uh, full-time study uh, for social work, and I told them, listen, let me take a sabbatic, let me try this. Let's start to making a workshop where we can bring families together. And the, that day is Star Casa de la Cultura, Kentucky. And my family, my friend, my family has helped me a lot, but we opened on July 9, 2013, the first piñata workshop. <laughs> yeah. See, all of this, <clears throat> All of this, would you have ever even imagined that all of the things that you're doing and the opportunities, you know, because sometimes people get in that hard space and they think that that space is going to last forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think you have to challenge yourself all the time and never be satisfied with what you have so far. I mean, you have to be grateful what, for what you have, and you have to be proud of what you are, no matter what. But you always have to challenge you, you know, try to get in out of that comfort zone mm -hmm. and challenge yourself. And like I mentioned in, in the, in the, in the uh, bio that I sent you, uh, it was really hard for me to see my life and put it in a little context, because the society has told us that has told us that the, the success is measured in money or in academic success, and it's not. It's it's, it's beyond that. I mean, you can it be. It is beyond that. You can be very poor but be very successful, a smart person, or you can be very rich and not. So it has to do nothing with you, you life quality or uh, education. It has to do with, with what you are and how you challenge yourself all the time to try to improve for you because that's something that's going to be yours. Nobody's going to take it away. Nobody's going to be able to take that away. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. Well, our time is just about up, but I'm going to pitch it to you for young girls and young women that are looking to you that might be in a hard space right now and can't imagine how they're going to get out of that. And if you want to say it in Spanish, I'm going to let you talk to them about, you know, any advice that you might have to them. Well, the advice I will say is it's okay to feel sad. It's okay to have feelings. It's okay to feel frustrated. But you have to look for, for somebody to help you. And you have to accept that anything that you do is not only you. You have to surrender by people who it's gonna help you and it's gonna love you no matter what. And sometimes it's not family, sometimes our friends, sometimes our teachers. So, tengan fe, have faith, because help is there all the time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for inviting me. You guys heard it from Monica, have faith. Faith is always there. Um, and, and don't limit yourselves to what you think success might be because success is different for all of us. Continue to watch as we celebrate other phenomenal women just like Monica who are making changes in our community. I'll talk to you soon.